Okay, so we're recording. Um, this is for the Yuri's Night 2011 Golden Anniversary of Human Space Flight. Uh, it's a video interview, and uh, we'll start off, and I'll ask the question, and then I'll pause for a second, and then please answer, and then when you pause, I'll that way they can chop up the video. Um, so please introduce yourself and your affiliation. Jean-Jacques Dobrin, working at the European Space Agency. And how has the first 50 years of human spaceflight changed society? Well, I think that that has changed a lot of society because uh, I think that human spaceflight has been the, at the forefront of uh, the uh, global approach, the global vision. Uh, and uh, I think that the, the concept of planet Earth is coming from human spaceflight. And, uh, because when, when Gagarin flew, uh, this was uh, the uh, USSR uh, technology uh, being the winner. When Neil Armstrong uh, landed on the moon, it was the US technology the winner. And it was the end of the race. From that very point, 20th of July 69, I think that the race was over. And that was the starting point of something much more important and much more interesting, which was uh, let's cooperate in space. And, uh, and less than uh, uh, six years later, it was the Apollo Soyuz, uh, two flags on, uh, in orbit, and then the uh, Space Station Freedom, four flags uh, with the, the four Western partners, and after that the, the International Space Station, five uh, flags uh, together uh, in orbit. And I must say that, that this is certainly something that we could not uh, achieve first on ground. And all these events have always preceded uh, events on the planet Earth. Uh, the Apollo Soyuz was much before there was a dialogue between the uh, United States and USSR on ground, and, uh, and uh, after that, the reunification between uh, uh, the uh, space station Freedom and, uh, and uh, the Mir station was uh, uh, preceding the reunification uh, on planet Earth, and meaning that space and human spaceflight have been the driver of. Uh, 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 a different vision, uh, uh, which is our future is global, our future is not anymore individual. <coughs> yeah, get the cough out. <coughs> <coughs> okay. How do you envision the next 50 years of human spaceflight to be like? Oh, that, that I shall not tell you, because I can be totally wrong. And uh, because uh, predicting the future is certainly the uh, totally useless because you have 95% chance to be wrong and uh, so why should I, uh, I make uh, plans for the next 50 years? The, 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 the key point is that international cooperation will grow in human space flight and uh, myself I have always said that uh, uh, from the current partnership of the space station we have to open the, that partnership to new uh, commerce, new participants, and maybe new partners, and, uh, such as India, China, uh, Korea, and uh, Brazil, uh, whoever uh, is ready to, to join that partnership. So I am sure that the only trend on which I can not commit, but at least uh, I can predict is the increase of the partnership. Now where this is not so important. The most important is to increase the cooperation. Now, be it in low Earth orbit, be it uh, for the Moon, for Mars, uh, for uh, asteroids, this is not the, the, the most important point. The most important point is that this is we, we are going there together. Now, as I said, the Moon, Mars, they are still there for five billion years, so uh, if we are late in landing on the Moon or on Mars, it will not make a big difference for humanity. It will make a difference for me, because I may be dead. But uh, for humanity, it will not make a big difference. The difference will be cooperation. Thank you. So, <clears throat> how did you get your start in the space industry? My start? Oh, uh, 
I, I am in space since uh, the 4th of October of 57 when uh, Sputnik was launched. Uh, I was 10 years old. I was just entering the school, secondary school and it was on the 1st of October. And on the 4th to celebrate my uh, entrance in the secondary school, uh, the USSR, they have launched uh, the, uh, the Sputnik and since then I am in space. I have spent all my time as a student to, uh, uh, during the night to, uh, to listen to the uh, Gemini uh, missions, Apollo missions, uh, because uh, due to the time difference it was on, always during the night uh, that uh, we were listening to that. I got my, my engineering degree on the 20th of July 69, and this is true. Uh, with Neil Armstrong arriving on the moon, and since then I am in space. So I, I, it's not the result of a choice. This is just that I fell in space uh, when I was 10 years old, and uh, I am still there. Could you please say a few words for the people that are around the world celebrating Yuri's Night 2011? I think that uh, they... Uh, they are right to celebrate together the 12th April uh, uh, 2011. I think that, uh, again, the, the, the message coming from the human space flight is, uh, again, uh, international cooperation, and it's good that uh, the 12th of April is not anymore uh, celebrated only in Russia, but celebrated all over the world to demonstrate that Gagarin is not anymore a Soviet citizen, but a citizen of planet Earth. And then I've got a couple extra questions if we have a few minutes, that's okay. Um, so this is sort of related, I guess, to the earlier one of falling into space, but uh, what is the source of your passion for space exploration, sir? Like, what motivates you about it? I must say that the, the, the passion has started uh, again in 57 with the, the, the launch of Sputnik has been for, for my generation. When I was 10 years old, uh, something which uh, when I was born, all that did not exist, and for uh, uh, for my generation to have uh, an, ar an artificial satellite uh, that we could uh, listen to, uh, we heard uh, Sputnik. Uh, it was a fantastic uh, discovery, and I must say that for me, uh, it was the, the the start of my passion, and and the passion has not decreased. Uh, even though being a director general, uh, there are some difficult meetings and some uh, difficulties, but uh, the reward is uh, the fantastic uh, results that we are getting uh, from, uh, from space activities. What space figure do you most admire, like person or what? group? I'm so sorry. like, um, if there's a, a space figure or like an astronaut or a researcher or someone within the industry that you really admire? No, no, I think that there, there is no individual, no individual uh, achievement in space. Uh, even in aeronautics there could be some individual achievement. In space there is no individual achievement. For uh, three astronauts in orbit there are uh, 1,000 engineers on ground uh, making uh, that uh, three astronauts uh, feeling comfortable and, uh, and safe. And meaning that there is no individuality. I think that uh, there is only uh, teams and successful teams. I am not successful. I am lucky to be part of a successful team, and that uh, this is very important. It's only teamwork, and uh, so there is no personality. Uh, how do you uh, think we can best educate the public about space and get, <coughs> excuse me, and get them involved? That this is the most difficult part of our job. I must say that connecting the space world and the real world is the most difficult part, because the space world is made of engineers and scientists, and for the uh, citizens, engineers and scientists, this is uh, uh, an esoteric family that uh, it's very difficult to understand. Uh, and uh, at the same, on the same token, it's very difficult for the engineers and scientists to understand what the citizens are expecting from them. And uh, that this is the most difficult part of our job. Uh, and today, I would say we have not succeeded yet on that. Uh, the, the citizens, they have not yet uh, got the awareness that space belongs to their future. So this question, uh, I'm going to modify a bit. The question was, do you plan on going to space? 
and maybe you could refer to uh, your selection, and then if you had the opportunity like to go on a suborbital flight, or would you go to space? Oh yes, I am ready to go to space uh, any time. I have been selected in 77, and uh, uh, so far I am uh, waiting for a flight. I have not yet got that, but uh, each time I am meeting Monsieur Perminov, uh, I am telling him, Monsieur Perminov, you will enter in the history uh, if you are flying me, because you will be the first one to fly another director general. So, uh, but for the time being, he's not yet convinced. And unfortunately, I have not the money to, to pay myself the ticket to go, to, to go on board the space station. But uh, I can tell you that if one day I am lucky enough to, uh, to win uh, 30 millions of dollars, I shall spend the 30 millions of dollars to go one week on board the space station. So I got one final question. Um, what piece of advice would you give to someone who wants to get involved with the space industry? Well, I think that there are, there are several advices. First of all, they have to, to be uh, a fantastic expert. It's difficult to work for space activities. And, uh, and we need the best experts because we are taking technical risks. And uh, the only way to manage the technical risk is to, uh, to have the best experts. So they have first to build an expertise. Uh, that is uh, number one. Number two, they have to, uh, to, uh, to work uh, to, to be a team player uh, because there is no individual work in, uh, in space. It's only teamwork and, uh, and especially uh, uh, international team because uh, we, we are uh, working internationally uh, for space. And number three, to take pleasure. I think that uh, you cannot uh, take the difficulty of working in space and the difficulty to work in teams without taking pleasure. So they have to, uh, to keep the pleasure. Great. Well, that's, okay. that's the question. So thank Très you bien. very much. Très bien. Okay. That's done. <laughs>